It's career week at Bayside High, which means that we move all the lockers, all of them, so that we have generic booths like medicine and computer. Set production seems to have this notion that the viewers won't notice this stuff, like that time when the plot needed a trophy case. Oh, you need a trophy case? Well, just move that bank of lockers. You need a career fair? Just move the effing lockers! And I'm sorry to say it, but this episode is going to get very little love from me by way of its jokes. I didn't know you wanted a career in medicine. Why not? I'm sick of school. <laughs> in fact, the set, the jokes, and the clunky plot holes distinguish this episode as the lowest rated on IMDb of all of Good Morning Miss Bliss, the four seasons of Saved by the Bell, and the college years. It's a rough episode. But to be fair... Uh, to be fair... To be fair... Well, to be fair, it is writer Jeffrey Sachs' first episode with the kids, and he may just need more experience. Which he does get. He writes 15 more episodes in the series, as well as 22 episodes of The New Class. But back to our episode. Zach is kind enough to introduce our theme. It's career week at school, and everybody's excited. <laughs> I'm not. It's the first sign that our parents aren't going to support us forever. What he fails to realize here is that nearly half of adults currently, age 18 through 25, still live with their parents for a multitude of reasons. For realsies, though, Zach wants to be a game show host, Screech wants to be an astronaut, Lisa wants to be a fashion designer, Jesse wants to go into the law, Kelly is torn between housewife and actress, and Slater just wants to wrestle and hang out with Kelly. Would you teach me how to wrestle? And I guess do them simultaneously if he can. After Slater invites Kelly to the beach, Zach has to jump in. No women, hey, the man is in training. Why no women while in training? Women weaken legs. And why does Zach care about Slater's training? Well, Slater is slated to wrestle Marvin Niedek, Valley High School's undefeated champion. If you are like me, this plot point raises some questions. First, didn't Slater already win the championship and the wrestling season is over? I won my weight class in the county wrestling championships. What? Well, that brings up a new question. What is a county championship? I've never heard of schools competing at the county level. And if Needick is unbeaten, is Valley High School not in the same county as Bayside since Slater would have beat him at the county championship? Why are these schools rivals? I've got more questions, but let's just say that I'm not buying this Jeffrey Sachs first-time writer for Saved by the Bell. What's with you, Preppy? Why are you so interested in helping me? Time out! Zach explains that every year he bets against Marvin Niedek, and every year he loses, which just further cements his awful betting track record. But hold on, episode. This is ninth grade. What does Zach's betting every year actually mean? What grade did this foolish betting start in? Not Indiana, right? We get no answers. We do know that Zach is super confident this year because Slater transferred into Bayside. He is sure he'll win Needick's motorbike. I wonder how this timeout looks without Zach's piece. What's with you, Preppy? Why are you so interested in helping me? Look, I don't need your help, Preppy. Mmm, yes. Flawless script and editing. Strike that. Reverse it. Thank you. Maybe we will harp on editing, because Slater's arm is suddenly up as Zack calls time out. Later at the max, everyone is busting Slater's balls over his decision to ignore career week and just focus on wrestling. He feels like a loser, especially with Buzzkill Kelly being his biggest critic. And I like how Zack buys into the game show host shtick by covering the ketchup microphone from picking up idle chatter. With absolutely no one else to turn to, Slater seeks out Belding for advice. Per the usual in Mr. Belding's office, we learn some new facts, like how he went to a Catholic school and wanted to be a professional basketball player. This dream was dashed when Sister Agnes kept blocking his shots. 
Belding then says this. Besides, can you imagine me dribbling down the court at 50 with my belly hanging out and my love handles tripping the referee? <laughs> my gosh, I would have looked foolish in that uniform. Yeah, even the big chief Robert Parrish knows Belding has no idea what he's talking about. Nobody plays in the NBA until they are 50. But this does lead Slater on a daydream sequence where the crew gets back together in the future to get... Uh, more diplomas? What is Belding giving them? Since this is all in Slater's mind, it is painfully clear that he doesn't know what the future actually looks like. And why is Slater's mind showing off Belding's butt? Oddities aside, Slater's future self is amazing. <laughs> I mean, look at him. It's like Joe Exotic got into leopards instead of tigers and wrestled instead of conspiring to kill a cat lady. Uh, real talk, what is this? What is this fleshy thing? And is this supposed to be a wrestling belt? Why are there gaps here? Here's my assumption. My guess is that the fleshy thing is the fat suit. And they thought it would be funny having it look like his gut was sticking out with his love handles like Belding was talking about. And that's the reason that the belt rides so high, because that's just where it would fit on this type of body. I think the belt is supposed to hide that top gap, and the briefs are supposed to hide the bottom gap. I have no answers for the suspension strips. Anyway, the outfit works, but it doesn't really work. See, and that's how I became the Flojo of Principles. The Flojo of Principles? You mean like Flojo, like Florence Griffith Joyner? You are a boob. In the boys' locker room, Zack and Screech pretend to cruise the California coast on Needick's motorcycle. What fantasy land is this where Zack prefers Screech over smoking hot babes? I wish they all could be California girls. Then again, look how happy they are. This is where we learn two very important plot points. One, Zack's part of the bet is his own motorcycle. But Zack doesn't have one. Zack isn't worried about this fraudulent wager as Slater is sure to crush Needick. Which brings us to plot point number two, Slater has quit wrestling. At the Max, Max relates that Slater is a lot like Max's dad. What, your father's a 15-year-old wrestler? No, a 50-year-old taxi driver. One day he decided just to give it up and stay at home, so my mom put an apron on him, showed him the kitchen. By dinner time, his meter was running. What? I don't see more than the vaguest of connections. I mean, Slater is a wrestler who's at the top of his game. He hasn't quit a job that was supporting a family. He's not some lazy loser like Max's dad. He's a ninth grader getting mixed messages from his supposed friends. And once the bad plot has finished his story, Zack calls Major Slater to rout out AC. And that still looks like Zack's old Motorola Dynatac 8000X, but this time with a little black tape around it. I'm just glad he's no longer fidgeting with the antenna like a noob. Having found out that AC has quit wrestling, Slater's dad orders AC to find a new school activity to replace wrestling. Zack, really buying into Max's story, points Slater to the cooking club. I remember in an earlier episode when Zack threatened to tell the wrestling team about Slater potentially acting as Romeo? Well, that's not an issue now in joining the cooking class. And the eye candy ain't bad neither. Slater? In an apron? Huh, you'll be laughed right back into the gym. Hey, even I'll make muffins to see that. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a wink? Zack attends the cooking club to see Slater's utter failure. <laughs> you look pretty in pink, Preppy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Slater prefers Zack in blue. And I don't normally show extended clips of the show, but you have to appreciate Mrs. Cummings here. I like to cook the way I feel, and I feel good! Uh, 
da-da-da-da-da. Take two eggs, da-da-da-da-da, and mix them around. <laughs> Take some butter, don't drop it on the ground, da-da-da-da-da. Put in some milk, da-da-da-da-da. Then add some flour, da-da-da-da-da. And what you've got is done in an hour. I'm baking a cake! <laughs> I'm baking a cake! <laughs> I'm baking a cake! What a delight! And so is Slater's cake, which means that Zack's plan is suddenly backfiring. Zack's next move is to invite Needick to the max to publicly shame Slater. I hear you gave up wrestling to do some baking. That's right. And you're lucky. I'm gonna be a world-class chef. Can we have Slater redo that line? Well, he said world-class chef. And people might think he doesn't speak good. Nita crosses a line and Kelly steps up to put him in his place. Hey, tough guy. Before you put him down, you should try his cherries jubilee. Oh, and look how proud Kelly is with that line. She is clearly confident that Nita has been put squarely in his place. Never mind the fact that it is still the same day, and that young Master Slater has only baked a chocolate cake, and that Kelly has not yet even tried his Cherry's Jubilee herself. Never mind and bother, she is proud of that line. I see you've got girls fighting your battles now, Betty Crocker. Fighting his what? Fighting your battles now, Betty Crocker. It seems like neither tough guy can get his lines right. It's now Friday. And Zack is scrambling. He arranges for Screech to take Slater's place and wrestle Needick, and the hope is that Slater will have mercy on Screech. Screech's life, however, is not as important as Slater's quiche. Just a few things to note here. Wrestling is typically done by weight class. There is no way Screech would wrestle Needick. In fact, there's probably no way Slater would wrestle Needick. They are likely in different weight classes. Matches are done on a wrestling mat with marked boundaries, not tumbling mats from the YMCA. Where are the other wrestlers for Valley and Bayside? Why are the spectators standing around like this is a dogfight? Why is Jesse cheering? Why are there only two legit cheerleaders? Why are cheerleaders at a wrestling match at all? Things don't go well for Screech. And then Slater shows up! And a referee shows up out of nowhere to officiate this non-regulation match! And, oh, holy baby Yoda, Slater murders Needick! Yeah! But why, Slater? Why'd you come back? Yeah, well, my quiche blew up and I realized, hey, I didn't care. I'm just a kid. I don't need a career right now. Also, I took that cooking class to look at Kelly, but Kelly comes to wrestling matches to look at guys in singlets, so why not be that guy? Zack finally wins a bet with Needick, but then gets detention. Then that's it! Marvin Needick was played by Gino DeMauro. His first on-screen gig was in the Wes Craven movie Invitation to Hell. He had a few bit parts in shows like Highway to Heaven and Family Ties, and his only steady work was in Day by Day. Gino looks way older than the other kids, but my internet sources tell me that he was only 16 or 17 at the time. Well, that's just a healthy boy right there. Mrs. Cummings, or as I like to call her, Joy Personified, was played by Bunny Summers. Bunny entertained on screen for 40 years, during which time she was a part of the J. Peterman reality bus tour on Seinfeld, had eyeballs blow up on her in Reanimator, and having the perfect Norm MacDonald name credited to her in the show Norm, the name being Large Woman. She gets far too little screen time here, which is too bad because this episode was sorely lacking. I'm baking a cake! <laughs> 